may be facing a measles outbreak. And a veteran KU professor dies. Good evening, I'm John Croman. And I'm Michelle Bandur. The Kansas City measles epidemic may have spread to Lawrence. Nine suspected cases have been reported to the Douglas County Health Department. Three are KU students. And it just takes a small number of any unimmunized or unprotected people uh, to get an outbreak going in a community, and that's, uh, that's what's happened. And uh, because it's so contagious, uh, it, uh, it's not surprising at all when you get it in one area that, it's, that it spreads quickly. Health officials are still struggling with the mumps epidemic. The number of cases has almost reached 200. Dr. Yaki says, however, the measles are much worse than the mumps. I mean, people with measles are sick. I mean, they couldn't possibly study. Right. They can't even read. You know, that light bothers your eyes and incredible headache and fever and just feel like you've been run over by a truck. So measles is much more, you know, students with the mumps, they can stay home and keep up with their homework and just, just take it easy, but not the measles. Yaki says some measles vaccine in the early 60s and 70s were less effective. So if you receive the vaccine then, you should get another shot. People who were immunized after 1980 or who have already had the disease should be protected. Watkins Health Center is offering free shots for KU students and staff. You can also receive the vaccine at the Douglas County Health Department for $5. You'll be not, you will not be denied the shot, however, due to inability to pay. A memorial service will be held next week for longtime KU entomology professor. 59-year-old Peter Ashlock died of heart failure Wednesday night. Ashlock had been at KU for 20 years and in 1983 became the Museum of Entomology curator. Services will be next Wednesday at 4 p.m. in Danforth Chapel. The Douglas County Commission will not meet Monday morning so that commissioners can go to school in Topeka. It's not just any school. It's a two-day intensive training course on the reappraisal hearing and appeals process. Commissioners will deal with those cases that go beyond the first two levels of appeal. The county appraiser next week will begin sending out change of value notices, showing us what he thinks our property is worth. The state expects at least 10% of us to appeal. The Lord's report next week will carry a series of reports explaining the notices and the appeals process. Beginning in March, Lawrence will have another hometown newspaper. It will be a weekly called the Lawrence Observer. Veteran journalist Janet Major is launching the new publication. She says it will look like a tabloid and have the feel of a news magazine. People have often said, I wish there were another newspaper. I get one thing from the journal world, but I'd like another perspective. And about a year ago or so, I guess I also seemed to be hearing, why don't you start a newspaper? Mm -hmm. And so I started looking into it. And the Lawrence Observer will hit the streets the first Thursday in March and will be available free of charge on the KU campus. Off campus, it will be available via annual subscriptions or by the copy. Major says she does not expect to replace the nearly century-old Lawrence Journal world, but hopes to add to the pool of printed knowledge and ideas in Lawrence. It'll be a tabloid size, 11 by 17, more or less. And instead of doing spot news, in other words, meetings and speeches and fires. We'll try to do more analysis and news features. Still to come in the news, assault weapons are causing more problems for police. The Radial TA from BF Goodrich. It's the radial that performs as good as it looks. The BF Goodrich Radial TA for proven performance on the road. Exceptional handling, long tread wear, and to accent the appearance of your car or truck. The BF Goodrich Radial TA for performance and classic looks. Get it today at DND Tire, 10th and Vermont. You rely on a dependable battery maybe 50 times a week, often in important situations. But there are hundreds of different vehicles, all with different battery needs. Don't be fooled by some place that sells maybe a dozen batteries for all models. The battery specialists at the Lawrence Battery Company stock more than 5,000 fresh, top-quality, maintenance-free batteries. The next time you shop for a battery, you'll find the best battery deal in town at the Lawrence Battery Company. Happiness is the right battery that starts and starts and starts. Three powerful superstars, one spectacular night of pay-per-view television. Frank, Liza, and Sammy, Friday, February 10th.
just in time for Valentine's weekend. It's Frank, Liza, and Sammy, the ultimate event. Get front row seats in your own home for the best in pay-per-view. Order Frank, Liza, and Sammy for Friday, February 10th, 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific with a radio stereo simulcast where available. 22 states have waiting periods for handgun sales, and as of 1986, Lawrence joined them. As Carla Siegel reports tonight, automatic guns are now the weapon of choice for many criminals. Some of them are easy to buy, and the police department says it can't keep up. In order to buy a handgun in Lawrence, you must be 21 years old and wait 72 hours for a record check, both criminal and mental. Police Chief Ron Olin says that since the waiting period took effect, by the law's standard, almost all gun buyers have been qualified. Uh, of all of the guns uh, we have checked in the last three years, we have found one transaction that was not acceptable to us, and we interfered with that transaction. Olin points out that the waiting period doesn't affect those who already own guns. He says many of today's weapons are highly sophisticated and create an arms race between the good guys and the bad. If uh, we are to protect ourselves in law enforcement, it is necessary for us to have the uh, equivalent technology or better technology than the criminal element, and we do not have that technology. The problem is the public has easy access to that technology. The waiting period for handguns doesn't apply to rifles. Olin says if society could keep guns away from people who already possess them illegally, that would have a greater impact than imposing gun-buying restrictions on regular citizens. For the Lawrence Report, I'm Carla Siegel. For a year now, we've been the guinea pigs for a new way of handling car tags and taxes. And County Treasurer Nancy Welsh says it has worked out well. Yes, it's doing what the state had hoped it would do. A year ago at this time, the State Department of Revenue was unveiling its pride and joy, VIPS, Vehicle Information Processing System. It allows transactions to be entered into the state computer the day they happen and gives county treasurers access to information they used to have to wait weeks to get. We'd had to endure, you know, 100% of those problems through the year since we've been on because we were the first county on. Every county that has come on after we have has not had to deal with the uh, uh, number of problems because they've been resolved uh, by the time. We have learned a lot by being the first county. We have had some input as to uh, changes and modifications to the system that have helped both the public and helped us internally. But as we've sacrificed for the state, all in all, Welsh feels the new technology is worth keeping. But my employees have adapted very well, and I think it's working uh, as well as it can be expected to work. The Spencer Museum of Art is presenting the first large-scale exhibit in English of painting and calligraphy done by Japanese Zen Buddhist monks between 1600 and 1925. The art of Zen is divided into seven sections, each focusing on a different period of Zen art. Zen has influenced many Japanese artists, inclu arts, including music, theater, architecture, the garden, and the tea ceremony. 400 years ago, Japanese Zen Buddhist monks used this art form for teaching, meditation, and as an expression for enlightenment. The show leaves Spencer March 5th. Museum hour hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 8.30 to 5, and noon to 5, Sunday. Sunday is Kansas Day, marking the 128th birthday of the Sunflower State. To celebrate the occasion, the quarterly meeting of the Douglas County Historical Society will become a covered dish potluck dinner. It all starts at 6 o'clock Sunday evening at Building Number 1, Douglas County Fairgrounds. Watkins Museum curator Steve Jansen will give a short talk called Life on the Frontier. It's all based on the early Lawrence settler Edward Fitch's letters home. Those letters cover a nine-year period, seven years before and two years after statehood. The public is invited and no reservations are needed. Coffee, soft drinks, and tea will be provided. You're asked to bring a salad, main dish, or dessert large enough to serve 8 to 10 people and your own tableware. It seems like only yesterday, 11 neighborhood associations were banding together to form the Lawrence Association of Neighborhoods. Believe it or not, though, it's been two years. LAN is holding a two-year anniversary meeting this, sun this coming Sunday afternoon. It's at 2 o'clock at 1642 Indiana. A social mixer will follow a brief business meeting, and any interested individual or neighborhood group is welcome. The LAN members represent East Lawrence, Old West Lawrence, the Oread, Pinckney, University Place, Western Hills, Indian Hills, Schwegler, Prairie Meadows, Brook Creek, and the Barker neighborhood. Ahead in the news, Bush talks to, to the press for the moment.
step right up to the greatest show on earth, the Lawrence Chamber of Commerce 1989 Small Business Fair, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, February 3rd, 4th, and 5th. See incredible demonstrations and seminars. And register for the many fantastic door prizes, including a grand prize of two airline tickets to any sunny Florida destination, courtesy of Moppin' Tour and Eastern Airlines. It's a show you won't want to miss, so hurry to the 1989 Small Business Fair, February 3rd, 4th, and 5th, in the Convention Center of the Lawrence Holodome. The finest and noblest of human acts, the giving of flowers, a most important step, and a venture not to be entered into lightly, for better or worse, rich or not so rich, to love, comfort, honor, and keep, in sickness and in health, until a full-bloom union of hearts. Seek out a worthy institution, Owens Flower Shop, 9th and Indiana, and happy will be that sacred hour. Looking for great movies? Looking for great sports? Looking for all this and great savings? Well, stop looking. After his first week in the White House, President Bush says he's ready to roll. In a spontaneous press conference this morning, Bush said his trip to China next month is not meant as a snub to the Soviets. He also defended the pay hike for members of Congress. The way it works on Congress, and the ball is clearly in their court, it leaves us with either the commission recommendation or nothing. And so, seeing the problems as I do, I still feel that, uh, that uh, I should not go about undoing the Reagan decision. Bush appeared easygoing and confident in his first 43-minute meeting with the press. Former President Ronald Reagan's infrequent news conferences had a 30-minute time limit. A Marine Corps official and two defense industry figures pleaded, not, pleaded guilty today to charges in the Pentagon procurement case. The Marine said he took bribes for providing confidential information on contracts. A former employee of Unisys and another consultant from the contracting firm admitted to charges that included illegally contributing to campaign donations. It was the first time that a congressional campaign had been publicly linked to the case. And political extremist Lyndon LaRouche was sentenced today to 15 years in prison. LaRouche was sentenced for a tax and mail fraud conspiracy. He was convicted of plotting to defraud the federal government on his taxes and to deliberately withhold more than $30 million in loans from his supporters. Meanwhile, federal prosecutors in Boston dropped related charges against LaRouche, saying the federal court action was sufficient. The judge in the Iran-Contra case says he could compel President Bush or Ronald Reagan to testify if he had to. Federal District Judge Gerard Gazelle said he would only carry out the subpoenas in a last resort. The government motioned to remove subpoenas for the testimony of Bush and Reagan in the trial of fired White House aide Oliver Norris. Gazelle did not rule on the motion. On Wall Street, the stock market surged today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average climbed nearly 32 points. Gainers led decliners by about 3 to 2, and there was heavy trading as 255 million shares changed hands. Analysts say a strong dollar on the foreign exchange markets gave stocks a boost. And Jim Brasiano is up next with sports, and I guess it's round two of KSU-KU. Mm -hmm. Round one was a dandy over in Manhattan two weeks ago, and tomorrow's game should be equally as good. I'll tell you more about it in just a minute or two. At Bucky's Hamburgers, we've served a thousand people a day for over 25 years because our dairy products, produce, and 100% Kansas beef are all fresh, never frozen, and delivered daily from Kansas wholesalers. And here's what people are saying about Bucky's. The food tastes great, and I love the ice cream. Bucky's has good quality food, and the kids love it. I come to Bucky's for the low price brown bag specials. I come here for their quarter pound buckaroos. Bucky's Hamburgers, a Lawrence tradition. Does your bank account work for you? Douglas County Bank compares its max account to most accounts. Which one offers the maximum earnings on your deposit, the maximum flexibility on service charges, the maximum convenience and security? The max account. The larger your deposit, the higher rate of interest you earn. Maximize your benefits with the account that's better than most. Douglas County Bank's max account. 
At Scotch, the more you take off, the more we take off. Scotch Frequent Cleaning Club. It pays to belong. It wasn't that long ago. Just two weeks have gone by since the Jayhawks went into Bramlage Coliseum and bumped the Wildcats by one point in overtime. Since that game, the Jayhawks have posted the 2-1 and one mark, while the Wildcats rebounded with a 3-1 and one record. But just like last time, the players pushed the records aside and prepare for a tough ball game. It's going to be a tough matchup. They would have extra incentive to come down here and play because if we beat them down there, like I said before, and uh, we just have to get ready for them. It'll be a big game. It always is. You know, they beat us here last year, so it should be interesting. We got to do exactly what we did when we were in Manhattan, only not closer. Uh, just keep playing the hard defense. Um, we got to keep rebounding. I think rebounding was something that hurt us. I don't think we played really well at K-State, but, uh, you know, we got lucky and the ball bounced our way. We're going to have to play better on Saturday to be able to beat him again. Kip-off for tomorrow's game is set for 3-10 at Allen Fieldhouse. Well, the Kansas Lady Jayhawks also have a game on the home schedule tomorrow with Kansas State. However, unlike the men, the Lady Jays are coming off a loss. In fact, the losing streak reached three games last night as Kansas lost to Oklahoma State 71-57. It came out real tough. We just didn't respond too well right away, but... Yeah, they did. They came out. It's real tough. I have the feeling that everybody in the conference is aware of the fact that we're such a young club that the way to beat Kansas is to come out in the very beginning and, uh, I mean, really work hard to overwhelm us, um, put as much pressure on uh, the young squad as they can, and uh, try to take them out of the game as early as possible. And then, uh, you know, second half, obviously, we try to fight back. Uh, but when you get in a hole like we, we tend to do, uh, it's, it's kind of tough. The Lady Jays found it even tougher to get out of that hole last night, hitting just 29% of their shots from the field. Personally, I was just off. I think the reason why I wasn't shooting very well is I was rushing my shot most of the time. I wasn't really concentrating too hard, and I was just really releasing too quick. We got shots off. They got, they got clean shots off, so I don't think that it was a matter that their defense hurt us there. It's just that we couldn't put them down. Coach Washington was pleased with their team's defensive intensity. And also the free throw shooting. That's one thing that had been lacking in recent ball games. And as far as gearing back up for Kansas State tomorrow afternoon, the players say no problem. A big rivalry. I'm looking forward to it. No problem whatsoever. We're going we're to be ready. The Lawrence High Lady Lions passed their first test in the Emporia Invitational Basketball Tournament on Thursday, and they did so with flying colors. Lawrence High dumped the second-ranked team in Class 5A by 20 points. The Lady Lions are up against 9-1 Emporia in the semifinals tonight. There's another Kansas University team that has posted some impressive numbers without really taking to the court. The 20th-ranked KU men's tennis team opened dual competition tonight against Southwest Missouri State. The Jayhawks also have the nation's 17th-ranked singles player on their squad, who will be very busy this weekend. John Falbo, our number one player, is currently ranked like 17th in the country. And all weekend, he'll play tough competition against Southwest Missouri State. Hawkins Spenson is ranked like 46th nationally. And Saturday night against Mike Brown, Mike is ranked 5th nationally. Brown is part of the Arkansas tennis team, which is 15th in the early rankings, and Kansas will face them on Saturday. For Falbo, the rankings aren't important, even his own. But the level of competition is. I don't really concentrate on the ranking or the wins or the losses, I just go out and I give my best effort every time and whatever the result is, is fine with me. We're scared a little bit, I'm nervous, scared, nervous. Uh, I just want us to go out and play as well as we can. Coach Perelman's also excited about facing top-notch teams, especially on the home front. See, it wasn't long ago that KU Tennis couldn't attract such teams on their schedule, let alone recruits, but that's all changed. He's pretty much done it himself. Um, the players, we play and things, but it takes, it takes a great organizer as a coach to do the things that he's done and gain the respect for the university that he has. It's just a crazy thing. When I got here six and a half years ago, they were just tickled to death we beat anybody, and now they want one championship after another. But that's a good feeling to have. But um, I just really important to me that these guys go out and improve, and we do this as well as we can day in and day out. 
Well, Scott's really done a great job with that tennis team over the six and a half years. Arkansas 15th ranked tomorrow at Alvamar. No admission, by the way, out there. Sounds like a good thing to do on a Saturday. It is. Right. Thanks, Sam. Mm -hmm. Kevin Darmafall is here with the weather, and it was another nice day, but we still need some rain. We do, and it's in the forecast once again. Can you believe it? We're even talking January thunderstorms for the second time this week. It was rather nice today with a high of 55 after a morning low of 33, and I'll tell you about a rainy forecast when we come back. To air is human. To cover it up is to be a kid. And to handle it, DuPont Certified Stain Master Carpet. Now, even if a stain like this sits for hours, it's a memory in minutes with DuPont Stain Master. The carpet that forgives. Ricky. Remember, get your Stain Master Carpet from Bud Jennings & Sons, 29th in Iowa, Lauren. Charlton Manley Insurance, may I help you? I just had a wreck. What am I supposed to do? Don't worry, you've called the right person. We can handle most everything right here in the office. Let me get some information from you. Sound too good to be true? Not at Charlton Manley. In many cases, we handle the claims right here in our office. If you should need immediate payment, we can get a check in your hands the same day. Price is important, but so is service. At Charlton Manley, we offer the best of both. Sure, you can pick up your check this afternoon. I can? Great! Detroit's the town, Jackson's the cop, and the killers just keep coming. Maybe now you live up to your name, huh? Carl Weathers. How do you like your ribs? Craig T. Nelson. What do you want from me? I want you to die. And Vanity. I have to catch a cab. His name is his creed. Action Jackson. Well, wasn't it just a gorgeous day again this afternoon? We reached a high of 55 degrees here in Lawrence. And much of the Central Plains saw much of the same weather. 57 was, degrees was the high again for Salina today, 52 down the pike at Wichita. The warmest reading I could find this afternoon was 63 degrees up at no North Platte, Nebraska, while in the state of Kansas, the high was tied at Hill City and Goodland, both 60 degrees, but just a little farther to the south, 37 degrees for a cool high in Elkhart, as they saw a lot of clouds and moisture and that's all due to a storm system off to our southwest. We're beginning to be, get organized in just the next few hours and move slowly in our direction. And taking a look at that current weather map, there's the low I was talking about over southwestern portions of New Mexico, spreading a lot of showers and thunderstorms up across most, most of Texas and back into New Mexico, where it changes to snow. They're expecting 6 to 12 inches of snow for portions of New Mexico and the higher elevations in Arizona. Much of the nation though saw very tranquil weather as high pressure dominated over the central portion of the country. Readings were in the 40s, even as far north as Pierre, South Dakota, which is about 20 degrees normal for this time of year. Taking a look at tomorrow's weather map, that storm system will move into the Texas panhandle, spring a lot of rain showers and thunderstorms from Louisiana back into Arkansas and into our neck of the woods, where it will change to snow back over the western portions of Kansas. If you're planning travel for the day tomorrow, west of the line, I'd say from Concordia back to Great Bend along I-70, you might want to pay close attention to the weather because it looked like it could get rather nasty. They're expecting about two to four inches of snow for the day tomorrow. Back home in the Lawrence area for tonight, the forecast reads this way. We'll have an increase to the cloud cover, south winds 10 to 20 miles per hour, with a low down to 38. That should remain dry, though, for the nighttime hours. Taking a look at tomorrow's forecast, though, a different story. Rain moves into the forecast, is likely all day long. Brisk northeast winds at 12 to 22 miles per hour, a high of 45 degrees, down to 32 tomorrow night. And the extended forecast Sunday through Tuesday, rather cool on Sunday as we get on the back side of high pressure, only 41 degrees for a high. But the start of next week for Monday and Tuesday, temperatures begin to moderate rather nicely, 55 degrees on Monday and 60 degrees for Tuesday with plenty of sunshine in store, Michelle. So we definitely do need the rain, and it looks like we will get it tomorrow. Sounds good. It does. Thanks, Kevin. We'll be back right after this. Aren't all bookstores the same? No! At the Jayhawk Bookstore, you can choose a gift for everyone on your Valentine's Day list. Our Hallmark cards and calendars make Valentine's Day special. You can choose graduation rings by R. John Limited, and our Jayhawk Sportswear is the largest selection available. So for this Valentine's Day, choose your gifts from the Jayhawk Bookstore. We have what you need at the price you want to pay. The Jayhawk Bookstore, more than just a bookstore at the top of Naismith Hill.
Introducing Manpower Personnel Services, permanent placement for office and industrial workers. We're using the same innovative system for testing, training, and evaluating permanent job applicants that has made Manpower Temporary Services the leader in the placement services industry. Now you can hire candidates for a permanent position on a temporary basis. Manpower Personnel and Temporary Services. Our goal is to ensure you the best on-the-job performance from day one. Manpower, serving hundreds of Lawrence customers since 1977. Call 749-2800. On the left, Tom Brayton. On the right, Pat Buchanan. Watch Crossfire and stay informed on the day's hottest issue. If you believe it is cold-blooded murder, why do you stop with sit-ins? Nonviolence is a tactic that the people of this nation can accept. Watch Crossfire and develop your debating skills. What the hell is wrong with being a card-carrying member of the ACLU? Because they work against freedom, that's why. Get caught up in the Crossfire. Crossfire, weeknights at 7.30 Eastern on CNN. A French astronomer remains persistent in his mission despite a lack of funds, respect, or success. He's listening to radio waves for signs of intelligent life in outer space. And as we see in this report, so far he's heard no one calling. This is the Nancy radio telescope in central France. It's an immense electronic ear listening to radio waves from across the galaxies. Radio waves that are part of the energy escaping from exploding stars, pulsars, quasars, and the like. They're picked up in this huge antenna and translated into digital information that can be studied by astronomers. The radio telescope at Nase also listens for sounds of light. Jean Edmond is an astronomer who's been waiting years to hear something. Using the radio telescope as a tremendous shortwave radio, flipping through the frequencies, He's trying to find some clear and distinguishable signal of a distant civilization in amidst the senseless static. Oh, yes, uh, in case you translate the digital uh, stuff in uh, sound, that would be either a something like that, or doot, 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 doot. Edmund hasn't had any luck so far, and he says he's having a hard time getting respect yes, and uh, funding for his research from other scientists. They don't slam the door, but uh, they smile. <laughs> They smile. But Haidman has been encouraged by one distant location with signs of intelligent life. It's called the USA. NASA's Ames Research Center is trying to get approval from Washington for a $90 million project to listen to radio waves from space for years at a time. If it's okay, NASA would build the world's most powerful radio wave receivers, dramatically better ones than those in use in France. Haidman is trying to convince NASA to attach one of those new receivers to the NASA antenna. And we hope that uh, NASA will bring a copy of its new receiver, revolutionary receiver, here, in order to, in a kind uh, of international collaboration, to put them together to see whether we get signals from other civilizations. With that equipment, Haidman figures he may actually hear someone calling out from the cosmos. On the community calendar, KANU's Imagination Workshop is recreating a lost episode from the Marx Brothers NBC radio network show originally broadcast in 1932. You can see Flywheel, Shyster, and Flywheel this Saturday night at 8 at the Lawrence Art Center. Tickets are available at the Art Center, $3 for adults and $1.50 for children under 12. Also at the Lawrence Art Center, the first showing of the Kansas Governor's Artist Exhibition will open this Sunday with a reception honoring the artists from 2 to 4 p.m. If you miss the reception, the exhibition, or the exhibit, that is, will stay at the center until February 23rd. Center hours are 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and 9 to 3 on Saturdays. And that is Lawrence Report for this Friday, January 27th, 1989. Thanks for joining us, and as we say goodnight, here's a look at some of the pets up for adoption at the Lawrence Humane Society. Have a good weekend. Good night.